Trading post flipping is a gold making method with fairly high potential earnings, and it doesn't take very much effort once you've got some experience doing it. For me, flipping has actually been the largest source of gold that I've made on my account. In this video, I'll be giving a short breakdown of what flipping is, comparing the advantages and disadvantages of using it to make gold, telling you what you need to get started, walking you through the process, and leaving you with some strategies and considerations to get the best results from doing it. Disclaimer. Trading post flipping can fit a lot of different playstyles, but it's still not for everyone. If it doesn't interest you, there's plenty of other effective gold makers in Guild Wars 2 that you can pick from, and I've got a few other videos that might suit you better than this one. With that out of the way, let's get started. So what is trading post flipping? Well, trading post flipping just refers to buying an item and then selling it for more than you bought it for. Conceptually, it's actually pretty simple. It's really the practice of doing it effectively that makes it a bit more difficult. What are the advantages and disadvantages of trading post flipping? The first advantage is that it's highly scalable. This means that your potential gold earnings will increase as you use more gold and spend more time on it. And at the high end, it can produce a higher effective profit per hour than most other gold making methods. The second advantage is that it's generally a very clean method of gold making. You buy items with raw gold and sell them for raw gold, often with short times in between receiving the item and listing it. This cuts out a lot of the handling of materials that you'd have to deal with with other gold makers, and it means you won't have to spend extra time on the delightful process of inventory management. The third advantage is flexibility. You can do it as much or as little as you like. You can sit at the trading post NPC or do it in between events when you're actively playing. You can even do it while you're editing mediocre YouTube content that people watch for some reason. The first disadvantage is that trading post flipping can be pretty dull and gets boring if that's all you're doing, or if you're doing it for a long time. The second disadvantage is that it does require a little practice to get good at, and you probably won't be making a high effective gold per hour when you first start out. The third disadvantage is that you do need to have some gold to get started, and you need to be fine with the possibility of losing some of that gold. You're never going to lose your entire investment, but you should set aside gold that you specifically use for flipping. So I just said you needed to have some gold to get started with flipping, but one of the most common questions I get from people wanting to try it out is how much gold do I need? My answer to this is probably a bit shocking, but if you want to try it out, a couple of gold is really all you need. Sure, you won't be profiting a lot of gold by doing it that way, and you'll be limited on what items you can work with but the process is still the same when you have 2 gold to work with as it is when you have 20,000 gold to work with. For those wondering how much you need to start with to make some decent gold, I'd say 100 gold is a pretty good amount if you're using flipping as a passive gold maker in the background. If your goal is to sit at the trading post and endlessly churn out gold faster than you would by farming, you'll probably need quite a bit more. But again, don't let the starting gold keep you from trying out flipping. You can get some experience flipping with whatever gold you do have, while you're gathering more to expand your capabilities. So how does the process actually work? Well first, we need to find an item that has a cost, risk, and margin that we're willing to accept. The cost is simply based on the amount of gold that you're comfortable working with, which is different for everyone. Just make sure that you don't put all of your gold into one or two items. If you need to, choose lower cost items so you can diversify. Risk refers to the likelihood and potential impact of the item going down in price and losing you gold, or it getting stuck on the trading post and forcing you to either wait longer for it to sell or relist it, which can also lose you gold. The risk will depend on what type of item it is, what it's used for, how often it's bought and sold, and how stable the price is. For example, a stack of mithril ingots will have much less risk associated with it than a black lion weapon skin. Mithril ingots have a more stable price, many more potential uses, and sell much more quickly on the trading post, making them less risk associated than a cosmetic item with only one use. Every item has some level of risk associated with it, so you can't avoid it entirely. It's just something you should consider when you're selecting an item to flip. The margin is the profit you get after you've sold the item and subtracted what you paid for it. Keep in mind that the trading post imposes a 5% fee for listing items and a 10% fee when they sell for a total of 15% off the listing price of your item. So your standard calculation for an item's margin will be 85% of the selling price on the trading post minus the buying price. This flat number is useful for determining how much gold we'll make per item, but it doesn't actually show us that the item's a good choice to flip. I could tell you that I make 5 gold profit from an item, and you might think that sounds pretty good. Until I tell you the item is a legendary weapon, and I have to put 2000 gold on the line to do it. 
We have to relate our margin back to the cost of the item to get an idea of whether or not it's worth the time and gold to flip. We do this by calculating our return on investment, or ROI. First, we take the profit per item and divide it by the cost per item. Then, we convert to a percent. In the case of our legendary weapon, this gives us an ROI of 0.25%, which is pretty bad. Let's say we still had a 5 gold margin, but on an item that cost 40 gold instead. That would give us an ROI of 12.5%, which is much better. There's no set ROI that's considered good, but I'd suggest aiming for 10% when you start out. If this all sounds like too much math for you, GW2BLTC.com is a great resource to search for items and see their current profit margins and ROIs, without doing any math or any spreadsheeting yourself. I'd recommend determining the cost and risk you're willing to deal with, then searching for items that fit those criteria. Using this approach will help you find items that fit your needs. If you just use the items to flip section of the website, you'll have a lot more people to compete with and will be finding items that aren't necessarily appropriate for the cost and risk that you're willing to work with. If you want more guidance with using this website, I have an old VOD dedicated to going over it. A couple of relationships to keep in mind when determining what item to flip. Higher ROI items typically have more risk associated with them, and higher cost items tend to buy and sell at a slower velocity than lower cost items, although that's not always the case. Once you've found an item that has an acceptable cost, risk, margin, and ROI, you can begin placing buy orders for it. It's up to you how you want to do this. You can either match the prices of the current orders, or place yours one copper higher so that it fills before everyone else's. Just remember, for low-cost items, outbidding others multiple times can significantly decrease your profit. You can monitor your orders closely and frequently update them to maintain the top bid, or only check on them periodically. You can sit at the trading post and flip away all day if you want, but you can also flip while you're waiting for meta events to spawn, LFGs to fill, or people in your raid squad to finish walking their goldfish before they join the instance. Once your orders fill, you just list the items for sale and wait for the gold to come in. The only trick here is to not panic or delist your items the moment someone undercuts you. Some items will sell in minutes, and others might get stuck and take a while. List it and forget about it. If your item's been stuck for a long time, you might consider delisting it and repricing to get it sold faster, but this often ends up losing you profit or even some of the gold you invested in the first place. I'd really only recommend doing that in the rare case that an item gets stuck for at least a month, maybe even longer. If you can't afford to go that long without the gold, that's a sign that the cost or risk was too high for you, and you should keep that in mind for next time. Now I'm going to cover a few strategies you might want to consider employing to get better results from your flipping. The first one is to extend the timeline that you're flipping on. For example, some items may not show a margin at any given time on the trading post, but their fluctuation in price over the course of a week could be enough to give you a decent margin if you place your buy orders at the weekly low price and list the items for sale at the weekly high price. Flipping over a very long timeline is usually called investing. This can be particularly effective for items that get dumped into the game in batches and that are inaccessible for long periods of time apart from the trading post. These include festival items, skins, dyes, anything associated with limited time events, and other items that have seasonal price fluctuations. Extending your flipping timeline is a great way to find margins on items that seemingly don't have them, while also making the process more hands-off. However, it does require you to be willing to set aside gold for longer periods of time, and you'll also have to allocate inventory space to store those items. The second strategy is to consider refining or crafting with materials to increase their margins. For example, flipping mithril ore might not be profitable, but buying mithril ore to refine into mithril ingots might be. The third strategy is to consider using player-to-player -player trading as a method to increase profit margins, or avoid the risk of items getting stuck on the trading post. This isn't an option with most of the items you'll deal with when flipping, but it works especially well for some. I have a video on player-to-player -player trading if that interests you. The fourth and final strategy is simply to develop lists of items that you've had successes with. This can just be a text file, a list on gw2bltc.com, or an API integrated spreadsheet if you want to get really fancy. Margins on items open and close all the time, and you'll inevitably have an item that worked very well for you stop working after a while. But eventually, the margin will open back up, and having the item written down on a list will make it a lot quicker to check. If you want to make your list more effective, Consider breaking it up into smaller ones based on the cost of the item or how often you need to update your orders. This way, you can group similar items and reference them based on the type of flipping you'd like to do at that time. 
So that just about wraps up my guide for trading post flipping. Hopefully, you feel ready to give it a try yourself. Just keep in mind, it will take a bit of practice before you start making a lot of gold with this method. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate you taking the time to give it a like, and maybe even subscribe if you want to see more gold making guides in the future. Thanks for watching.